Now, as you can tell, this is my personal system and it is back at the studio. And that is because I recently did an upgrade of it to the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. And if you can tell from there, I'm actually back on my 5800X3D. And that is because I didn't have a great experience with the new Ryzen processor, but I have managed to fix that because I've decided to get something else. So before everybody starts jumping into the comments, I have been an AMD user for a very long time. I don't think I've actually run Intel in my personal gaming system for about 20 years, something like that. I've always used AMD processors and I've always had great experiences with them. But recently when I upgraded this system to the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, I had nothing but issues. The initial build went fine. It actually built perfectly fine and it even benchmarked perfectly fine until you actually restarted the machine. Once you restarted the machine, it took forever to get booted again. And after a few rebuilds and a week's worth of troubleshooting and finding lots of people with lots of the similar issues, I decided to give up. And that's because my personal game PC is generally used like a console. I have it at home and I just want it to play. I want it to be as stable as possible and that platform just wasn't for me. Now I know lots of people have had great success with the new Ryzen processors, particularly the X3Ds, and I do know that there's less problems with the non-X3D chips, but I wanted to go with something big, something nice and fancy, and that's what I chose, but it just wasn't cutting it for me. So because of the misery that I had from the AMD Ryzen processor, I decided to treat myself with one of these. Now this is an Intel Core i9-14900K. It is a 24 core processor. That's eight P cores and 16 E cores. It's absolutely brand new to me. I don't really know much about Intel's, not at this kind of level. I've never actually spent this kind of money on a CPU before. It is way above my budget. And to be honest, it is actually way overkill for most people people when it comes to gaming PCs but I decided to treat myself and this is exactly what I'm going to go for. I'm hoping that this CPU actually gives me a better experience and I'm sure it will do because they're a little bit more mature particularly on the socket and the platform so hopefully that will resolve it. To go with this CPU I also decided to get a motherboard that is from a manufacturer that is well known. It is of course an MSI board. This is an MSI Z790 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. The reason that I chose this board is because I've had great success with MSI boards over the last couple of years. On the Ryzen system, I did use an Asus ROG Strix board. I've not had that much success with Asus boards, to be honest. Every single one in the studio has died apart from one over the last couple of years, but lots of people recommended it to me, and it was a B650E E, so it wasn't a cheap board, but supposedly they have a lot of issues, and that obviously went back too. So I'm sticking with the MSI board, and I'm going to see if it will actually resolve my problems and be as stable as the 5800X3D has been. Now, of course, the motherboard that I've got, this one here, is actually a very nice looking motherboard. It's not the most expensive motherboard out there, and it surely isn't the most advanced one, but it is a very well tested platform. And particularly the model's got everything that I need. I don't really overclock things, and I know I bought a K processor, so why wouldn't I? But I generally don't. So whatever the motherboard can actually handle is going to be perfectly fine for me. It does come with four M.2 slots, so at least I've got plenty of space for storage. I've loaded it up with our 32 gigabytes of DDR5. That's 6,000 megahertz. We'll see at some point whether it can actually run stable at that. And of course, at the moment, I have this very cute, diddy little Celeron processor installed in there because yesterday I was actually updating the BIOS in here to support the new processor. But today we need to actually swap the processor over, get the old board out of the system, get the new one in, and of course, get it all up and running and see if we get any issues. Now, of course, before we start installing this into the system, there's a few things that I need to swap over from the old one onto the new one. In particular, my storage drives. I have actually installed a brand new drive on this motherboard, so that's actually going to be for my OS. It's a one terabyte, but I do have a two terabyte drive here with all my games on it that I'm just going to swap straight over. I also need to swap the cooling solution over, but of course, that's fit to an AM4 socket, so we'll need to actually change the brackets on that and build it for the LGA1700. First thing we're going to do, though, is obviously get the CPU installed. I'm just going to my memory out because I don't want to accidentally catch it or damage it so we'll put them to the side and then we'll take a look at what we need to do to get this apart. Now I have got a stock cooler on here so this is from the Intel Celeron I believe all we need to do is just twist these little pegs to get it off and then we can start looking at installing our CPU. With the uh, cooler off now, we can see our little Celeron CPU here. We're going to actually remove that, but I do want to replace it very quickly with the 14900K because I do want to use a contact plate for this. I've got a contact plate here. I tend to use them on all kind of LGA systems. 
But for this one, I, because it was just temporary and I was just updating the bias, I didn't bother fitting it. But we do have a contact plate here that's actually going to get installed. So we'll just grab our CPU out and then we can protect the socket while we actually install the bracket and everything should be good to go. I do actually like the way that the uh, Intel processors are packaged. They are this little flip system and then you get this disk inside. Although I do believe it's only the i9s that you get this in. You don't get it for the lower ones or at least I didn't with the i7s that I've purchased. And then we just crack the pot tin open. It's like a plastic thing. And we can see our processor inside. Now, of course, it is the same size as the Celeron processor, but it's much more expensive. So you do not want to damage one of these. I need to just pop it out here and then we'll just do a direct swap. With the CPU installed, obviously I need to fit my other M.2 drive. I'm going to be putting it in this middle slot here. I'm not really sure what the best slots to actually install things are, but I'm just going to basically just go down the system. I've got me one terabyte in here. I just need to remove this little two terabyte here with my games on it. Make sure I don't lose the screw. We'll install that into here. And then obviously the little plate itself holds it down. Remove the little peel off the back. And then we can just simply rest it down just like that. And screw it back up again. So that should now be my game drive and it should be detected by the system. It should be automatic and then I can just point Steam to it or whatever launcher you use and it should pick the games back up again. Now, of course, you don't want to lose the original retaining clips. What I tend to do is I put them in the little bag that the uh, contact plate came in and put it in the box for the motherboard. I keep all my boxes usually, particularly for motherboards that I've still got in use. And that way I can always protect them when I take them back out again. If you don't, make sure you keep it somewhere safe because you don't want to lose this. If you do, then obviously you're going to lower the value of your board, particularly if you come to resell it again. So make sure you keep that safe. So now we've got the CPU, we've got the uh, storage done. We're going to drop our memory in again in a minute, but I need to swap this cooler over. And for that, I need to build some different brackets. So I've now removed the cooler from the old 5800X 3D system. This isn't going anywhere. This is going to stay at the studio and we're going to find another use for it. It was a fantastic platform, a fantastic board. I had absolutely no issues with this. Very stable, very fast. If anybody out there is on an AM4 platform and you want something older than this CPU, it's definitely worth checking out as an upgrade because I think it's going to keep you going for a lot longer. But we're on to new things now. So we're just going to pop this down here and start preparing the new board. Now the cooler that I am using on my system is a Fractal Lumen. I actually purchased it a long time ago, well before LGA 1700. And unfortunately for me, I did have a failure with it, which meant that it had to be replaced. And the one that they replaced it with did come with an LGA 1700 bracket. So I kind of looked out here. It means I don't have to go and get one else from somewhere to be able to get this to work. I don't 100% know if this cooler is enough for the 14900K. It is a 360 millimeter system, so it should actually work perfectly fine. But we do now need to change the bracket. We've taken off the AM4 bracket and we need to swap it out for the LGA bracket. Now this is the one here. They actually give you an extra little bag. They basically just threw that into the box of new ones just to kind of cover things. And it just basically slips onto the cooler just like that. Now, of course, I want it to be exactly the same setup as it was before, because I want to just drop this straight into the case. So we're going to do it from this direction and we're just going to install it exactly the same place as it was before. For the Intel cooler, I've already installed my thermal paste. It's on the CPU there and we'll need these little screw down things that we've got here. I've put the back plate in already. So it's just a case now of dropping this down, lining it up and then getting the little screws on. Just like with all coolers, when tightening these up, you should just go corner to corner, make sure that that pressure is evenly distributed. I tend to do one, two, three turns on each corner, alternating as we go around until they pretty much hit the bottom of where they need to be. Some coolers don't actually hit anything. You just have to kind of go by eye and just make sure that it's tight enough to get that kind of pressure onto the CPU. Now I think that cooler is actually installed pretty well now. Obviously we've got to drop our RAM back in and once we've dropped the RAM back in, I need to get it back into the case. So we'll do that and then we'll come back and we'll give it a boot and see if it actually boots up. So the system is all built and everything went in perfectly fine. It was really good that I actually fit the Ryzen processor before because it meant that I run the extra cables, which this motherboard required as well. And because I was going from an MSI Gaming Plus to an MSI Gaming Plus, everything was in the right place. And it was actually really easy to just drop the board in and get everything hooked up. But of course, the real test is, will it actually boot? So let's hit the button and find out. It's starting to think a bit. We've got some lights on. 
We've got some fans spinning up. All we want is a post. As long as we get it to post, we're pretty much good. And then we can start configuring things up and setting things up the way that we like them. The monitor has activated. Are we going to get a picture though? So we should be getting a picture from our Radeon RX 7900 XT. Should be coming through. And there we do. We have a post. MSI logo has come up and it's starting to load into Windows. So we're going to get the drivers installed for this graphics card, get a game installed, and then we'll see how well we can actually game with this processor. OK, so after a little bit of a mess with the uh, installation of drivers and Steam and making sure that everything's hooked up, we did have a slight issue where the system wouldn't actually post into Windows once the graphics drivers were there. And a quick visit to the BIOS, actually, I started to realize what was happening. For some reason, the motherboard was just directing to PCI Gen 3 and the graphics card didn't like it. As soon as I switched it manually to PCI Gen 4, everything started to work perfectly fine. But we're in here, we've got a game installed and we've got all the drivers running. At the moment, it's running perfectly smooth. I think we'll just jump into a game and we'll see what kind of uh, gameplay we're going to get. The game that I'm going to be playing is, of course, Hogwarts Legacy, because I am actually currently playing that game myself. And I'll, of course, want to see how well it now performs. We're now into the game. I've not actually got that far through this game. I've only really just started it. I think I'm about 7% through and I'm actually really loving it. So if you guys want to try it, check it out, you definitely just give it a go because it's a great game. I do play with a controller, but for now we're going to jump over to the settings and just double check what we're actually configured to. If we have a look, we're currently running at 1440p. That's where I left it from uh, the previous system. VSync is turned off and we've uncapped the frame rate, so we should be able to see something. We should be able to put our AMD stats up in the corner and obviously in the menu we're currently getting 250 FPS and the CPU is not really being used that well. It's uh, currently got a 34% utilization. We'll head back into the settings though. We'll just double check. We're in ultra settings. That's where I was playing before. So let's just jump into the game, make sure everything works fine and give it a bit of a run around. Now for anybody that does like the Harry Potter franchise and the, all the Hogwarts kind of stuff, you're really going to love this game. I wasn't a massive fan, but I started playing it and then I actually suddenly started enjoying it. But I mean, everything here is playing perfectly fine. We are in, as we checked before, 1440p, ultra settings, getting around 136 frames per second, 137. The GPU is probably the thing that is obviously causing a bottleneck here, running at 99% utilization and drawing around 309 watts, which is pretty crazy, but it does only have a temperature of 60 degrees. So I would actually class that as a success. I can play the game that I was playing before. There's nothing going to cause me any issues here. So I think that is a complete upgrade. We've pretty much got everything now running in the system. We've got the CPU actually installed and it is pumping out some nice warm air, actually probably too warm. I know these 14900Ks are supposed to be a bit of pigs to uh, kind of keep cool, but this one's actually pumping quite a bit of warm air into the system. I will actually play with the configuration and settings. I do need to go and set all the fan profiles. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the fans are pretty loud. And for somebody that actually runs mostly Noctua's in here, you'd think it'd be pretty quiet. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to sort those fans out. I'm going to do some more testing on the CPU, make sure that we've got great contact on the cooler and that it's performing well, and probably play a bit more of this game. So I'm going to go do that and I'll catch you guys in the next one.